The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 448 Get Sheft On The ornate double door to Percival's mansion was attended by a single disinterested griffin who appeared capable of guarding it in a pinch, but really enjoyed having nothing happen as his job. He glanced up as Valet, Maple, and Starlet approached, looking like he wished they'd take the back way in. This is Percival's mansion, he grumbled, lounging against the shaded side of a pillar. And we're tourists, Valet belched, striding forward with a grin. Snazzy place you got here. Mind if we take a look around? Don't hear that every day, the guard sighed. See yourselves around. Rooms aren't off limits unless specifically marked and the staff's word is law. So don't make pests of yourselves or get in anyone's way. The door swung open and Valet blinked. Yeah, that was easy. Well, I'm not complaining. Come on, let's go see if we can make friends with the kitchen staff. With a roll of his eyes, the guard closed the door behind him, and the three friends were inside. Percival's mansion had a two-story foyer with a vaulted ceiling, and Starlight counted five doors branching elsewhere on the ground floor alone. <laughs> Valet waved her nose around, thoroughly ignoring the staircases to the second floor balcony. Think we're going this way. Coming? Starlight watched the decor from Maple's back as they passed along through doors and hallways. The aesthetic sense reminded her a little of Elise's home in Blue Leaf, with plenty of contrast between bright accents and dark backgrounds, with a fondness for swirls and a dislike of the green side of the color spectrum. Red, orange, and purple, the colors were stacked like a sunset with straight walls and elegant exposed support beams in an architecture that never felt claustrophobic while still giving the impression of strength. She wondered how many different creatures had worked together to design the building, if Percival had drawn the plans himself. Well, now, a kindly voice drawled as they stepped into a more open room. What have we here? Starlight blinked. A bad pony mare in an apron faced them from between two rows of countertops, looking like she had once been tall and slim before a decade of good eating took its toll. With an unusual pale peach coat, she raised an eyebrow at him, a rolling pin tucked beneath one wing. The valet raised an eyebrow back. So, something tells me you're the chef around here. The larger mare looked back with a disapproving smile. And something tells me you're a ragamuffin looking for free handouts when you should be enjoying your holiday. So I guess we'll have to give each other the benefit of the doubt. Bah? Valet tilted her head. Menef, not bah, the mare corrected, tapping Valet's nose with the end of a rolling pin as she walked past. Ignoring her entirely, she then gave Maple and Starlight an appraising nod. You two on the other wing look famished. There's a cookie jar over in the corner if you're looking for something, though it hasn't been refilled since yesterday. Oh, sweet! Valet perked up toward the indicated corner, only to be held up by the rolling pin. Not you, Minaf chided, bopping her with the handle once again, and then prodding her on the side. You're plenty well fed already, you roly-poly shrimp. Leave those for ponies who would appreciate them. Valet felt back, wincing and rubbing where she had been poked. Hey, what are you calling fat, Lord Barrel? We're supposed to be on the same side. Maple winced as well, standing far away from the indicated cookie jar. Could we not fight? We're trying to stay on good terms with as many ponies as possible while we're here. Hmph, <laughs> Mayneth huffed, stepping back and leaving Valet alone. I can tell when someone comes to this kitchen purely hoping to score a bite to eat. You're up against senses honed by countless waves of gremlins from that school over yonder. She pointed in a vague direction. Using your holiday for pilfering, too. Don't you have anything better to spend your time on? Well, what are you doing here if it's a holiday? Valet asked, vaguely hurt and pointing an accusatory huff. Cleaning and keeping the place open for anyone who really does have nowhere better to be than at work. Minev jabbed the ruler right back at her. Which doesn't include you, you goon. Management really ought to take better care of wayward souls like you. Hmm, management? Valet's eyes crossed, though she still kept the weary watch on the rolling pin. What? 
You are from management, aren't you? Maynaf asked suspiciously, batting her free wing with a roller. What? No, Vili protested. We're from Ironwich. Ever looked at a newspaper? Or maybe a dossier your boss put out? We're like guests of state or something. I don't even know what management is. Maynaf took a moment to size her up. She's right, Maple confirmed, nodding her head. And it is a little mean of you to be picking on her alone. Bananas, what is it with me and chefs in the Empire? Voy groaned, unhappily slumping, and wiping her bra with a wing. I see, Menef decided. Well, I'm still fully aware of what you came here for. My apologies for calling you fat, Bonebag. I suppose you'll be wanting me to dirty this kitchen, making something special just for you, won't you? Vully winced. Ah, look, if it's trouble, I suppose I should be grateful you're in here, instead of pestering someone not accustomed to it, Minef sighed, brushing open several cabinets and cupboards with a wingtip as she breathed around the kitchen. There's no menu, and I'm not making anything hot. You wash your own dishes when you're done. Say nothing, and it's sandwiches made from leftover lettuce that needs to get used up. Understand? Maple gave an awkward smile. Really, we don't mean to cause trouble. Don't. I'm used to it. Maynaf nodded, already focusing on something as she removed several jars from a cold box. You don't get by in a job like this without getting yelled at by far too many ungrateful brats. Bonebag, I don't know what you do for a living, but you're about to learn to slice tomatoes. Get over here and show me how you hold that knife. I'm not a bone bag, Vully growled ears back as she nevertheless obeyed. Bananas, what have I gotten myself into? Tch, just can't make up your mind, can you? Maynaf sadly shook her head. Knife, use it, ball barrel. Vully's eyes flashed and then the steel did, the countertop tomato falling into perfect fifths. How do you like that, she growled around the handle. And don't call me fat either. Minef eyed her job. Five pieces? There are only four of us here, you gluttonous pile. Put them back together and try again. What? Valise ears folded and perked in annoyance. It's a tomato! How do you put it? Ugh, never mind. Seriously, lady, what's your problem? I have a name, you know. Minef touched the tomato slices with a wingtip, sliding them gently over each other, and then there was a tiny spark of light. Her cutie mark gleamed from behind the apron, and then the tomato was whole. Bananas, Lily swallowed, eyeing her expression and slumping in defeat. Well, at least jam jars isn't washing. Something tells me I'm in for a bad time. End of chapter 448